Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great Player. My name is Guy and I'm going to be talking to you today about 10 online etiquette rules that I think everyone should know about. Now, if you've watched the channel, you will have seen how I've shifted from being vehemently against online role-playing to being a proponent of it. Thanks to you, people who were watching the channel at the time complained that I was too close-minded in terms of online role-playing, and so hosted me to play online. They opened my eyes to the possibilities and the wonders that come with online role-playing as an alternative, not as a replacement, of traditional tabletop role-playing. Then over time we looked at the different rules and things that you should listen to or engage in if you want to be a successful online role player. And I think it's time to go back and look at some of those rules and to question whether we are doing them or whether we've developed worse habits in the course of our journey as online role players. So these are my 10 online etiquette rules in no particular order and not specifically numbered because, well, it's just good common sense a lot of the time. And most of these have to do with outside of the actual online role playing. So the very first thing that I would look at is to arrive early and log in. Now, I have mentioned this before, but frequently I've been in role playing sessions where people have arrived exactly on the time or just after. Well, there's no grounds really for tardiness. You shouldn't ever be late for anything. But arriving on time means that you've missed out some of the banter and that those that have arrived early have had a chance to discuss and plan and plot. And, well, you haven't. So I would always suggest arriving at least 10 to 15 minutes earlier so you can be part of that conversation. It also allows you time to chat to one another and to check your settings, your microphone, all those wonderful things. As he says, microphone, he checks his microphone. All those wonderful things that you can just make sure are ready for play. Which means, leads me to my next point. Have everything ready and in duplicate. So if you've got your character sheet stored online, have another version of them in a Word document that sits on your desktop or is easily accessible. By having things in duplicate, it means that if something goes catastrophically wrong, you've still got it somewhere and it is still available to you. Portraits of your character and those kind of things, again, have in duplicate. It's not going to kill you to have two of the same file stored in two different locations. It just makes things a lot easier and smoother if things do fall over. And they do. Set reminders about the event. I horrendously, horrendously this week missed a role-playing session that was scheduled well in advance simply because I hadn't set a reminder. I had no excuse for missing it. It just slipped my mind. And an hour of me casually having breakfast and enjoying life a message pops up saying, hey, are we playing? Of course, by then it was too late and I had already caused injury and insults to those who had made the time to be there. I had not. There's no excuse for it. I didn't set an event timer. There are many, many systems online that you can do that. You can do it on your phone. Just set a reminder. And that leads me to my next point. Check the time of the event in your time zone. Now, because of online role play, you can play with anyone anywhere in the world and at any time. And oftentimes events will be created on Facebook or Meetup and that kind of thing where the date and the time is listed. But sometimes it isn't appropriate to your time zone. It's at the creator's time zone. Or they live in a country that doesn't have daylight savings, but you do or you don't and they do. Check the time with everybody and double check the time with everybody. There's nothing worse than you arriving an hour into a session going, hey guys, let's start playing. And they go, well, we've actually been playing already for an hour. You didn't show up at the right time. So check that time. It's important. All right. Now, have printed backups of everything as well. A printed character sheet costs you nothing. And it can sit on the desk and you never use it. It becomes a coaster for your cup of coffee or whatever it is that you're going to be drinking throughout the session. But it's just backup. Computers crash. It's easy to get back into a Zoom or Skype session to continue role playing. But if the character sheet is corrupted or whatever the case might be, paper is very, very unlikely to corrupt. Yes, you could set it on fire, but if that's what you're doing during your role-playing session, I think you're in the wrong space 
anyway. So the idea is to have a printed character sheet so that if things do go wrong, you have something that you can fall back onto and use with well, merely picking up a piece of paper. It's as quick as that. Now, with the duplicates, with printing, you've got everything. You've got reminders. You've checked the time. You've had a look. Something else that's important to do is to book an hour after the scheduled conclusion point. Sometimes games run a little bit longer, and there's nothing worse than having a player sitting half an hour before you're supposed to finish going, um, guys, I know we said we're going to finish at 12, but I need to actually leave my house at 12, and I still need to put on pants and to write out my speech for my brother's wedding because it's important that I give the speech uh, in an hour's time. So I'm going to actually... Can we leave? Can I, can I leave exactly at 12? I've timed it perfectly. There, that's rushing the rest of your group needlessly, and it's putting pressure on yourself. So if the session is booked from 8 until 12, book it personally from 8 until 1. So you have that extra hour, you can then shoot the breeze with everyone after they've finished playing, or you've got an extra hour to relax and unwind after the game before you move on to your next social engagement. Always give yourself a little bit of extra time to do that. Speaking of engagements in all senses of the word. It's always good to let two people in the group or the whole group know that you're going to be late if you are going to be late. Something has gone disastrously wrong, the cat has set the house on fire and you need to put it out quickly before joining your online game. That's understandable. Things do go wrong. Let at least two people know if you don't have a group chat going already. If there's two of you, if you can let two people know, that's great. Why? Because if you let one person know and that person also happens to be late, then you both end up looking like, well, basically people who don't care about the rest of the group. And that doesn't engender relationship building very much. If you let two people know, when Daisy doesn't show up and you don't show up, Daphne can at least say, oh, no, I got a message from Brian. He said he was going to be late. And I got a message from Daisy saying that she's going to be late. I wonder what they're both up to. But anyway, let's not question it. They said they're going to be 15 minutes late each. So let's wait for 15 minutes, whatever that case might be. Also, speaking about engagements, your significant other. And there's nothing worse than being in the middle of a session and suddenly one of your fellow players or your GM suddenly goes... Sorry, what were you doing? Yes, okay, no, that's fine. The orc swings his axe at you because he um, really needs to hit you. Uh, make a roll. The GM or the person doing this might think that no one else has noticed that they're telling their wife that the hula hoops are in the cupboard behind the scuba diving gear and just below the uh, pink raincoat with their eyes. They might not think that you have noticed, but you have. And what's that done? It's broken your space. You're already out of the game. Because now you're wondering who they're looking at. Why are they asking you a question during the middle of the game anyway? What's going on? So try and avoid that. Speak to your significant other, the person sharing your space, or the random hobo who wanders through your house. Speak to them and say, listen, for the next five hours, please don't disturb me, unless it is an absolute disaster emergency. So... Please, just give me that space. Give me that time. It's five hours a week or five hours every two weeks. Just let me have this space. And if it is something desperate, if it is something desperate, stick your hand round the door. That's it. That's all you need to do. I'll see it. And then I'll ask the gym at an appropriate time. Hey, can I have a five minute break? I just want to go and water the dog. And then you can leave and then you can go and deal with a significant other and show them where the hula hoops are. Just, it's a common courtesy, and it doesn't look very good when suddenly your partner walks in behind you with a load of washing and starts to glare at the back of your head so that everyone who's on the webcam can see. That just doesn't look good. I think that's all. I'm looking at... Oh, yes, yes, no, there's two other things. Sorry, 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 I got lost in my notes. Wait for your turn during play. This is something that I've noticed happening where players are so enthusiastic to get to their point to make their action happen that they jump in. Or the GM says, all right, I'll deal with that later. They go to another person and then the player says, oh, hang on, before you go to them, can you come back to me? No, I've stopped with you and I've gone to them. How dare you interrupt? 
let others talk. Give them their space. They've given you your space. It's only common courtesy to give them theirs. And if they're not talking, if they're being very quiet, a final thought, a very good habit to get into, is to turn to them and chat to them. Not out of game about the latest Avengers Infinity movie, but chat to them in character. Ask them a question. Start to build up the relationship between your two characters. And obviously not as the GM is talking to everyone else. That's the one disadvantage that you have online. When you talk, everybody hears you, unlike a table where you can quietly talk to the person sitting next to you and not disturb everybody else. So those are my thoughts on online etiquette and updating the idea of what we should and shouldn't be doing as technology advances and changes, as webcams get better quality, as we start to see these things really dominating and starting to take over the space. It's a really, really interesting environment that we're in. What are your top 10 things that you think people should be aware of when they role play? Give us a thought, leave a comment below as to what you think we should add to this list so that we can all be better and more accommodating with engaging with our fellow players. Anyway, until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest of playing.